So what's a simple web performance optimization thing that you can do before you go home today to make sure that your site ranks better in search engines and is more pleasing to end users? I'm going to talk to you about the fab icon in this video. Hey guys, Chris Love, the owner of Love to Dev, and one of the things that I'm very passionate about is web performance optimization. That's because fast sites are liked by people at a much higher rate than slow sites, and that just makes sense. And as a reward, it's a search engine ranking factor for both Google and Bing. If your site's fast, you got a better chance of ranking higher. And a lot of that comes down to people just like sites that load fast, so they actually do the other things that are also ranking factors like they don't bounce back to the search engines and they dwell on the page longer because they feel more comfortable reading it. And one of the things that you can do that is a super simple thing that is often overlooked is make sure you have a fav icon. Now what is a fav icon? Well it's a little graphic image that you see up in the address bar of the browser. It's not something that's actually part of your page or your site per se as far as the rendering process goes, but it's sort of that meta information that you have to include. Now, the reality is, every time a page is loaded, if the fav icon has not been loaded yet, the browser is going to look for it. And you can designate what image file is your fav icon. Now, today, it can be an ICO or an icon file, which is what it originally was, but you can also have a PNG, and I also believe you can even do GIFs, but the most popular format is a PNG. And you'll want to have a PNG that's at least 32 by 32 pixels, but you could also use a 64 by 64 pixel image as well. And you'll want to reference that. Now, the reason why a fav icon can be a performance benefit is very simple. If, you're, if you don't have the fav icon, the browsers will request it and they'll get a 404 response back. And every single time your page is loaded, your server will need to process that request again and again. Now, one company in particular that suffered major issues because they didn't put a fav icon on their website was Instagram. Now, I know you know who Instagram is, but when they launched, they were getting about 35,000 people signing up an hour, which is amazing. Anybody would dream of that. But their servers were falling over. And that's because the web server was constantly having to look for that fav icon file. And this should be a lesson in general about having 404s on your server. If you want to improve your server's efficiency, make sure you don't have any 404s. A 404 means that the file does not exist. So what happens is when a request comes into the web server for that file, it must hit the hard drive or the disk to get the file off there. If the file is not present, it returns the 404. And then the next person makes the same request and the same thing happens over and over again. Now, if you were like Instagram, they had 35,000 people uh, an hour trying to sign up. What happens is the hard drive is doing nothing but looking for that file. And we call this thrashing. So the server was locked up looking for the fav icon file, which meant the server was unresponsive. Now, if you have the actual icon in place, the first time a request comes through, it will pull it off the hard drive. But if you've got your web server properly configured, the web server layer should then cache that file in memory, which means the next time someone requests that file, it will come out of memory, which is a much faster process, plus it does not involve the hard drive. So this means that the response is much quicker and that the hard drive is not taxed near as much and ultimately your server can be much more responsive. So if you don't have a fav icon or you're not properly pointing to your fav icon, make sure you fix that today. This is something you can fix in a matter of minutes and you can definitely do this before you go home. You do this and you can improve your overall site performance. This is just one of many web performance optimization tips that I'm sharing here on the channel. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of them and I'll be posting new ones constantly. If you think this is helpful, share it with friends, and give me a big thumbs up below, and I hope that you have the best performance from your website possible. 
hey, if you've got any questions about web performance optimization, shoot me a line and I'd be glad to answer them and maybe make another video for you.